All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. By now you have seen the launch of the 2024 Polaris snowmobiles. And today we're gonna go over features, benefits, what's new, what I like about it. Let's get into it. Okay. Pretty dang excited. I love this time of year. We can finally start to talk about it. I've been on the 2024s. And as you guys have seen from either coming out west or living out here, we have had one incredible winter. So about time, right? Um, and so, Got to get on those sleds first week of January and it was it was all time snow. It was just absolutely over the bars deep, which was really, really fun. Um, in terms of specifics, so we talk about, you know, what's coming up new and what you guys have already seen. So some new colorways, which that's this thing that we always talk about, just bold new colors. And there's definitely some really cool ones. I'd say if I had to pick favorites within that, uh, really love the, the tan, like the military tan theme one. There are some, uh, some greens, some unique uh, orange colors that are actually really poppy on the snow. Had a lot of fun riding the sleds. Is it still a Polaris snowmobile? And the answer is absolutely. Is it still a Matrix chassis that I think has definitely changed the game? It's changed the way I snowmobile. It's, the, it's changed the way I coach snowmobiling. Uh, I think it's changing riders left and right, which is why it's so dang popular. But what's new? Um, we've got a brand new track and we're gonna use our time here to talk about the track, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, who that track is gonna work well with, something like that. And then we've also got a, a brand new ice scratcher. And then in terms of calibration, both with suspension and with motors, we're not gonna go down this rabbit hole and you guys can question, comment, do what you want in terms of uh, reliability and just the things that were happening throughout our year. What I would tell you is across the board, and this would be every OEM, I feel like in the world that we live in, there are and have been some struggles. God knows my business and just what I go through to make it look like to the public or to the face of social media or the highlight reel that we're also fo focused on. There's a lot of things that are happening, a lot of things that are changing in our worlds, different suppliers, struggles, things like that, um, companies going away, new companies coming in, things like that. And so I'd say with that, there have been some struggles with snowmobiles and odds and ends. And so I'd tell you that with my connection to Polaris, um, friendships that I have both on the marketing side as well as through engineering, guys are going like crazy, working around the clock, trying to make improvements. So constant calibration changes, both to motors, to suspension, and just, it's a learning process, right? It's a practice. And so the idea behind delivering the absolute best products possible, I would tell you that that's the goal of every OEM. They are not purposely putting out recalls and purposely doing these things because they don't want to sell product. They don't want to make customers happy. Know that all of those struggles, all of the things that are happening, there are people that are working around the clock to make our experience the best that it can be. And so let's just get off that and talk about what's fun. The snowmobile in itself, whether you are our boost guy, whether you're a 9R guy, and you guys are gonna see a video shortly here, that is sort of my take, and you'll love the end of it. Not unlike Brett Turcott's video, which Brett, by the way, that was an awesome one, talking about his favorites and why one day it was a boost and why one day it was a, and, and we'll just use naturally aspirated sled, because I do not want to in any way, shape or form, you know, maybe cannibalize the 850 matrix, because what an amazing snowmobile, what we've all kind of grown to like and to trust and all those things. The 9R just being the step up from that machine uh, and more or less filling the gap between the guy that maybe thinks he needs a boost, wants a bit more power than the 850, there lies the 9R. My picks are you're gonna have both. And it hasn't been too many years here where, you know, there hasn't been just this, this is the pick, this is it, this is all I'm gonna ride. Um, and now I know, and this is expensive, it gets hard, and I'm not out telling everybody to do this, but I'd just say if you could, could you have a boosted sled for that specific boost time frame? which this was the year where man, could you have taken a boost out almost every single day you rode? And the answer would be, yeah, it was a lot of fun. What makes a boost sled so dang fun? And as we tie this together with what's new for 2024, a boost with this new 325 track, what that is gonna allow us to do. Well, if we were gonna look up the key features of the 325, and by now you guys are seeing 
all of the marketing, all of the stuff that's out there, you're reading about it, you're seeing it just as I am, what I'd tell you from riding it and just sort of the under my feet, under my butt feeling with the track is that the words that Polaris gave it in terms of it is a forward moving track. It is about as spot on as it could be. And I think that that would be agreeable to everybody on Polaris's team that has an opportunity, has had an opportunity to ride it. So we are in deep snow and the idea that you can turn the corner and head uphill, ski spacing straight up the fall line and give it gas and literally feel that snowmobile beyond hover mode, beyond this idea that they come up out of the snow, the idea that it does not trench and the idea that this thing literally propels you forward, I am telling you that it's gonna take a lot of you guys that know what you know. You're on the balls of your feet and you are anticipated, like you know how to ride. It's gonna blow your way. Like it blew me away that I could turn the corner, whether it was a boosted sled, 9R, whatever it was, and that sled just flat got up out of that snow and went forward. That would be the magic behind the 325. Now, is it a track for everybody? If we were gonna compare them, I would tell you that the dry weights, and you guys probably saw that from some of the literature that you're reading, it says that the 325 would be comparable to our three inch track, our Series 7, which as I look it up, guys, and you can jump on the Snow S forum and look at what I'm looking at, you're anywhere from like 49 pounds uh, from a 55 to a 65 uh, or even 63. Um, but there's a lot of different weights that are out there, but I would tell you that it's comparable to the three inch. Something that's unique, and this is another new thing from Polaris that I think is awesome, is that now all of our tracks uh, is all based off that 275 platform. So a 275 is a 3.5 pitch. Well, now our 325 Series 9, that's also a 3.5 pitch. So no changing of drivers. Uh, in fact, Chaos versus Pro RMK, which has always been a big topic. Heck, we've We've touched on those things through the channel many, many times and throughout my season, it's always pro RMK versus chaos. And I would say that when you're trying to ask yourself like what that is ultimately for you, understand that there's some specifics to each one of them. Uh, is, is, is one the consolation prize that you couldn't get from your dealer? And the answer is never. Can you get a pro RMK to stand up? Well, ask Chris Brand if you can get a sled to stand up. The guy can do it, right? I have been riding and enjoying one of my guide sleds this year is a Pro RMK 165 9R. And man, when you wanna get with it and you wanna go uphill and you wanna do it and be deliberate, that is an amazing snowmobile. Same breath, the 165 Chaos 9R. Does that thing maneuver and flip around like a 155 of any of those sleds? And I tell you, you know what? Come ride with me. I think they are one of the most fun snowmobiles on the planet. And so, and then we put the boost into this whole thing. Lots of different things and lots of different reasons why when you're making this decision at Snowcheck, and, and again, I go back to like, if we can, have both. Have that day when it's just uber deep and a turbo, a boosted sled is what you need to get from A to B. And we had, a, we had so many days, guys. We had piles of days this year where it was like, I couldn't go anywhere. The boosted sled is what you had to have to make trail for all your aspirated friends. It was crazy deep. And so I wouldn't want to give that up, not for a thing. And then snow settles down as it always does. We get some moisture back into it. We gain some traction in the snow. Can you have an aspirated sled for that? And the answer would be certainly. And then there's the effort that's involved with riding either one of them. A lot of guys would tell you, and I, I would agree with them, that uh, an aspirated sled, is it less effort to ride something like that versus, well, anything with massive horsepower? And I think the answer would be, yeah. I think unanimously across the board, we'd all be saying, it's just easier to ride my 9R or easier to ride my aspirated snowmobile versus a boosted sled of any OEM. And it's true, they're a lot of work. Can they be a ton of fun? And the answer is, yeah. So I, I'd say fun factor, pretty equal across the board. And you guys can make up your own mind in terms of what you like to ride and the terrain you're in, the elevation, uh, what your riding areas look like, how your buddies ride or your family, something like that. So new track is the new news. And then along with the new track is a new set of scratchers. We did it. We, fi we finally have done it. It's almost like saying back when we were putting tethers on snowmobiles, which by the way, Polaris, kudos to you guys. We made a tether that works just fine. And I'm so thankful and happy that we're no longer really having those conversations that tethers are on snowmobiles. It's easily uh, one of the most important things that we should put on and nearly make it part of our group check in the morning that tethers are working and they're clipped onto us. You guys get it. But our new scratcher. So 
it's a reversible scratcher. It's, uh, it's got a, a pile of downforce. I love the way it mounts. Because of our new cooler design, especially on the Matrix Slash models, you can tell that it's actually you know, putting that snow up and we're actually cooling the cooler versus the whole rear of the tunnel um, based on our kind of current setup. And it's been a long overdue you know, complete change. And so the scratcher has been working as we rode in January. And granted, we had really good conditions, but even on the groom trail, you know, never really saw temps over 100. And you guys get it that, you know, we're, we're trying to hold sleds in that like 130. We'll just keep that kind of a, a general thing. But I think with the existing scratchers that we've had in the past, um, you know, they were breaking easily. And were, were they holding, you know, that type of temp? And the answer is we struggled with them. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. There's no other way to say that. And so having a good scratcher is a long overdue thing. We finally have that for 2024. You combine that with this track that as you... You guys are seeing images of it. You're seeing guys riding it. I've been riding it. Um, I mean, it's magic. It's a cool snow. It's a cool snowmobile. Um, the whole package. So whether you're on a boosted sled, aspirated sled, adding the three two five. So here's some specifics to it. Um, beyond being the three point five pitch, beyond the weight that we kind of talked about, what I would tell you is under your butt, under your feet, like what you'd feel in terms of that drive forward. Um, I don't see a negative. The, the, the idea that it's a very specialized track, and you guys just listen, that on the trail, they don't want us going over 50 miles per hour, which I'd tell you that any groomed trail, um, if I use my area, the Grays River specifically, do we need to be going over 50? And the answer is like, not for any real period of time. And so um, understanding that because of the, the lug design, how big it is, I mean, it literally looks sort of like a lifted truck kind of sitting there. Um, yeah, you'd want to keep it down. I'd tell you that a lot of track failure that we see throughout the year is guys treating their mountain sleds like a short track race sled because they think it's fun to drag race. And it's one thing when you're on the trail and you're going to just give it some gas for a little while there just to check clutching and see peak RPM at an elevation, something like that. But we're talking about the constant RPM, how many times guys switch the gauge from, you know, wanting to see just RPM and they just want to see top speed and they're taking a 165 down the trail and are trying to go as fast as they can. Uh, players are going to limit that. And, and I'd say that with that track, if that's not what you want to be limited to, then maybe the 275 or something else would be the track for you. But I can easily see myself with not only some personal snowmobiles, some guide sleds, even some sleds for rentals, um, having this new 325. Reason why? Not only is it an awesome, amazing track for all the things that I want to go and do and sort of that competition that I have with myself with the mountain. But for the new person that is making mistakes, got caught up in a side hill, was maybe in the wrong foot position, as we talk about through the channel a lot, and having the ability, having another, uh, I think that this is what Polaris does, is like another cheat mode where we can be in the wrong position, get ourselves in a bad spot and have a track that is just so dang good that it pulls us up and out of those holes and literally propels that snowmobile forward. So advantage to everybody here. Could it be looked at as a track that it's only for the guys that are accessing the steep and deep and it's only for the guys that are bow ties, hop overs and that's just their whole on the hill gymnastics and that's their series of things that they're gonna go throughout their day. And I don't think that. I think this track could be for a lot of people. You just have to really do some sort of inner searching of what it is that you're ultimately after and that'd be the same for the Boost and the 9R. Guys, I just jumped onto Polaris's website. As you're seeing, uh, kind of same thing now that this, is, this product is out there. Jump online. Even if you're not going to buy a snowmobile, pretty dang fun to go through and customize a sled and kind of take a peek at it. What I would remind you is that Snowcheck started you know, March 6th, 2023, and it'll go through March 29th. So basically the month of March, uh, you'd want to get into your dealer or get online and, and, and build your snowmobile. Um, hopefully, without it just kind of sounding like a bunch of regurgitated stuff, really what I was wanting to get out of the video is, you know, my take. I think you guys know that I get to get on these these snowmobiles. I get get to spend quite a bit of time. And because of where the, the chute is, I get to ride it in kind of my hometown, my home turf. And there's probably a lot of you guys questioning, well, what's the track like in different areas? And so luckily, my good friend Chris Barrant, I think you guys know him, um, He's been out on this new track, this 325 as well, both on a aspirated 9R or an 850, as well as on the boost sled. And that is no secret that where he lives in Colorado is, and I've been there many, many times, uh, and same with Steven behind the camera right now. We've both been talking about how 
how it hands you your butt down there. And for those of you that have been to BBA, for those of you that live or maybe have, have ridden in that area, that type of snow where you'd nearly think that there wasn't a track that was ever going to work well. And Chris has always said and been a 2.6 guy. The 275 was doing a, a pretty decent job in his snow. And so to hear from him uh, and, and, and understand what his overall thoughts uh, were about the 325, well, heck, I just called him up. So let's just see what Chris Barrett had to say about the new 2024 Polaris snowmobiles with the 325 track. So here's what you're going to see with the 325. And I've tested and ran big lug tracks in the past. And to be honest, there was a lot of give and take. And most of the time I always went back to a track that was more versatile. One thing I found with this particular track is it works on the low snow conditions. And, but where it really excels is on those deep days or that snow that has a little more, more moisture content in it. This track is just an absolute animal. What I was very surprised about was instead of lifting and trenching, the sled actually propels forward. And that's something uh, that I was really surprised with with the 325. A couple other things that uh, I wasn't expecting was it is smooth going down the trail. Um, and then in conjunction with the new ice scratcher, it actually cools really well. That has something to do with the, with the scratcher that is now reversible. You can actually back up uh, and go forward. That's something that us Polaris guys have been wanting for a long time. I think one of the biggest thing that this track has done for me is with how fast it gets accelerating and how fast it propels the snowmobile forward. It allows me to look at lines even more different than I have in the past because of just how fast I can get going. And you know, that's what's so important with mountain riding or tree riding in general is that first initial 20 feet of getting going. Um, and I think that's something that really blew me away with this track was just how it had the ability to move forward instantly. All right, so that was awesome to hear from Chris, uh, get his take on it. And, you know, from, yeah, from personal experience of being on the snowmobile, you know, did we make some, some improvements in, in just the right spaces? You guys all can agree that when you find the right snow tire to your pickup, uh, you didn't know what you didn't know. You didn't know that it could be that rad until you put them on and you went and you had some experiences with it in all kinds of different conditions. Well, the 325 for me, um, in the condition that I have been on it. Um, it gets me really, really excited to kind of have that track throughout the rest of the year and continue to give my input. So beyond the video, you guys will see some other stuff that we'll do both on the channel and then through my social media, just kind of going over and exploring just how good this track is going to be in maybe not that perfect deep snow, like how it does in hard snow or some sort of a layer, um, what it feels like when it's not just, well, maybe what we all dream about of a sled working perfectly and just deep pow when the snow is easy. So when snow gets complicated and the spring comes in and we get a bunch of varied layers and things like that, it'll be awesome to continue to explore the advantages of that track. So look for more of that uh, coming from us and I'm going to try. I try my best. You guys get it. I ride for Polaris. I ride for a lot of these companies. So, you know, is there a, like a bias with some of this and you guys have to know that uh, if I didn't have this program with these guys or these guys, I'd be buying it. It's just the snowmobile that I love. I feel like my style of riding and the style of riding that I really enjoy. Uh, Player snowmobile is what I choose to ride. Um, it becomes more out of trust than anything else. So anyway, all things coming for 2024. I'm really, really excited to get out there. I know that I'll have some of these sleds and it's going to be exciting to be out there and, and give them a whirl. If you guys are in the, the Alpine areas, feel free to stop by the next level shop. Uh, absolutely nothing to hide now that we're talking about it, which is awesome. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and it shared some, some insight as to my personal opinion and look forward to seeing all you guys again. Remember, leave those questions, comments, subscribe, bell notification, and please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate bringing you guys as much information that is from my heart. It's from what it is as I am a snowmobiler, just like you guys out there trying to put my hands and feet in the snow every single day. So we'll see you on the next time.